Oh my god. <gasps> Hi guys, I'm Maury Martin, the Texas Snake Hunter. And I don't know about y'all, but anytime I hear someone say a cottonmouth chase me, that's exactly what I think of. I think of them running for their lives and jumping in their vehicle and the cottonmouth showing up inside of the vehicle with them and just killing them, their family, their dog, everyone. And that's just because that's how ludicrous that story sounds to me. Right here I'm sitting right next to a western cottonmouth that I found over here in the creek side. And these snakes are just highly misunderstood to me. So the goal of this film is to debunk some myths about them. I'm going to teach you guys some of the tales that go along with the snake, why they got it. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. These guys are pit vipers in the Akistron genus, uh, along with copperheads, cantiles. They are beautiful, heavy body pit vipers, big front-facing fangs, and actually huge venom yields. These guys are not the most venomous snake here in the state of Texas, but they're definitely one you would not want to take a hit from. And rightfully so, people are scared of them because of what they can do. But the key thing is, do they do that? Do they actually come after you? Do they actually warrant the fear that has basically followed them around for a long, long time? These snakes average around two to three feet. They really don't get too big. If you find a four or five footer, it's absolutely huge, and they do happen. But most of them are around this guy's size. This will be an adult for this area. And of course, they get their name, Cottonmouth, from whenever you see them, they open their mouth and they just gape at you. They show off that white mouth, and it looks like a ball of cotton sitting there. And that's usually about how far their defensive posture, defensive behavior goes. Of course, they'll rattle that tail like crazy too. It just goes all over the place. They're one of the craziest rattlers I've ever seen. Not a rattlesnake, but of course, rattling their tail in agitation or just in fear. These guys are opportunistic feeders. They feed on almost anything out here. Frogs, fish make up majority of their diet, but these in this creek I've actually observed eating snakes. And apparently these eat snakes quite often because we've seen several of them eating water snakes, which is pretty dang sweet. Cottonmouths will actually eat each other too. So let's go ahead and debunk some myths about them. Myth number one and the one most commonly heard is cottonmouths will chase you. And I thought that one was pretty crazy, but there's only one way to really test that. Walk up to a cottonmouth, maybe put your boots by it, act like you're going to step on it, or, you know, put like in a wild situation if you were to just walk up on one, and then turn around and run. See, the key thing to be chased is you have to be running from it, and it has to be coming after you. It's not coming towards you that is chasing. It's not any of that. It's he has to run after you when you try to leave. That is chasing. He has to pursue you. So we're going to see and test if he will actually do that. All right, guys, chasing time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, entice this cotton mouth right down there. And then we're going to film if he's going to chase me. So pray for me because uh, this may very well be my last film. So let's go ahead and film me. Let's see. All right. Cotton mouth. All right. It's going to be quick. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my gosh, I'm walking down the trail. I'm stepping by the cotton mouth. Run. Oh dang. Tripped on a log. All right. I do not see a cotton mouth behind me at all. And I ran a pretty considerable distance. If this guy would have chased me, he should be right behind me. And he's right back where I left him. This is strange. He was supposed to chase me. All right. So here's my next theory is that cotton mouse are pretty scared of people. So maybe they only chase you when you scream. So that's what we're going to do. Let's check the scream. So, all right. Here's our cotton. Let's go ahead. Alright. Uh I don't really see a cotton mouth at all, so I don't think that the screaming affected him. Maybe he's gone. Oh no, he's He's right there, still. All right, um, let's, hey, I got an idea. So, sometimes people tend to get a little bit more scared when they see a snake and they end up screaming like a girl. So, I'm gonna have to alter my voice pitch a little bit and see if I can get a, a high pitched scream going on. And my mom's here. So maybe she can scream too while I'm stomping and then I'll do a high pitched girl scream like, hold on. 
that's about the best I got. So you guys are just gonna have to deal with that, okay? So let's go ahead, cotton mouth. Let's get some zoom in. Ah! 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 All right, ran a pretty good way. Um, no cotton mouth. It seems that the shrill of a crazy wild woman does not entice them to chase either. Maybe he's gone. Oh, no, he's right back there. This is very, very odd. I would have definitely thought he would have chased me, especially with that scream. This is about the only way you'll get a cotton mouth to chase you. Just get one to float downstream towards you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he chased me as much as uh, people would hope he did. So I would definitely call this one a bust. Now, there are several reasons people think that they do chase you. Number one is what's called the mock charge that they do. And that's right whenever you see them, if they want to scare you, they kind of run up at you and then they go, ha, ah, with their white mouth. And they just show it at you and it's kind of like starting. You're like, oh, Jesus, what is this guy with the white mouth and everything? Kind of scares you a little bit and gives them a time to escape. You can see him actually gaping at me right now. But this is not chasing you, because if you turn around and went the other way, he would not be hot on your tails running after you. Another reason people think these guys chase them is because they're commonly encountered along these creek sides. And generally when people walk by them, they're in between the cottonmouth and his home. So he wants to go to the water and or a hole and or a hiding spot that he has commonly trekked or tracked across. And that's the direction he's going to go. And so you are standing between him and his hiding spot. So that cottonmouth is going to come bolting right in your direction. It's not chasing after you. I've actually had several of them come bolting at me, and all I do is just stand still. They go right over my boot, right in between my legs, or just right past me to get to wherever it is they're trying to go. Again, not chasing. Uh, some people think that cottonmouths are chasing them just because they come to them while they're fishing. Remember, if you're fishing, you're pulling in dead or hurt fish or blood. You know, the smell of fish is in the air, and that's what these guys eat. They're coming after that, and they can be quite curious snakes it's not chasing. So these guys are definitely not chasers. They're not uh, any means going to run after you whatsoever. Myth number two, cottonmouths are extremely aggressive. Well, there's really only way, one way to test that. To be aggressive, they have to want to try and kill me. And want to try and kill me meaning that they will bite me when given the chance. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You don't even have to press them on. These guys will just bite you. And so we'll test that by putting our boot around them, by them, act like we're walking up on them. We'll do several tests to see how much it actually takes to get a cotton mouth to bite you. Because if they're aggressive, they'll bite me on the first run through. If they're not aggressive, it's going to take some prod and maybe they may never even bite me. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> this is goofball. He says, ah, fear me, I have a white mouth. Can you see that I'm stepping on him? Hmm? Ah! Cotton mouth aggression test number two, this guy. Let's go see what will happen when you walk up to one. All right, buddy, I'm coming your way. I'm a big, dangerous guy. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Boot. 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 Boot, 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 boot. I'm actually holding his tail, keeping him from leaving. Man, he almost chased me. But luckily I survived. Cotton mouth aggression test number three. Now this girl is pretty aggravated because I just tonged her and put her up on shore. Let's see what she does. Stomp all around her, right next to her. I don't think she's chasing me. Let's try the boot on the back. Hey, stop. Stop, you're supposed to chase me, dadgummit. Ugh. Aggression test number, what is this, four? Four or five or whichever one we got this cotton mouth lurking 
waiting to ambush and kill people up in the brush. Let's see what will happen if you were to walk up to her. Bon up. Bon up. Dun 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 and she's gone. Oh nope, we got a little head sticking out. Come on! Get aggressive! Chase me! Ah! No dice. Probably. We're gonna figure out if this guy's aggressive. Let's go see. Hey there, Cotton. I'm just walking on my merry way here. Let me just step right here by you. Why aren't you chasing me? What's going on, buddy? <laughs> he shot back, but he didn't bite. He just shot back, though. All right, later, buddy. This is Cottonmouth number 4,762. And let's see how aggressive he is. All right, buddy. Time for you to meet El Buto. Hey, where'd you go? Oh my gosh, these guys are so aggressive. He is planning out his attack underwater now. There we go. And I guess he is gone. Here's another cotton. And uh, you can see she's definitely Gape City. She's like, ah, look at me, look at me. So let's see how much it takes for her to bite because she's such an aggressive snake. One, two. All right, I'm stepping right next to her. I'm stepping over here. Still nothing. All right, let's try boot on. Boot on and tapping. Tapping, tapping. Boot on back in front. Oh, we actually got some fan foldage right there. Let's try boot in the mouth. Oh, look, we got our first nick. I literally had to stick my boot inside of her mouth to get her to bite me. Crazy, aggressive snake. Yeah, after all those tests, I would definitely have to say cotton mouse are one of the least aggressive snakes I've ever seen. I mean, we were prodding and putting our boot all around these guys, and I couldn't even get some of them to bite without sticking my boot di directly in their mouth. I mean, they were acting absolutely really, really nice. I mean, the majority of the ones that you see would just do the gaping thing, which is really crazy. For such an aggressive snake, as so many people have told me, I was quite shocked to see how many of them just took on the prodding. I mean, literally, their defensive display did not move past the gaping. Myth number three is these snakes will jump out of trees and into your boat. That one, we really don't even got to test because I've been around several lakes, creeks enough to know that cotton mouse are not the biggest climbers. Do they climb? Can they climb? Yes, yes they can. Majority of snakes though that you see in the trees are actually either Texas rat snakes, which are the, uh, the really long snakes we have here in the state of Texas and across the southeast. They, they get super, super long, close to seven feet in some cases. And they commonly climb to be able to get to birds. They love birds, and they definitely love rats, too. And then, of course, water snakes. Now, we have four species of water snakes in this general East Texas area, and all of these guys are very easy to identify uh, against the cottonmouth. But a lot of people mistake them just because they associate water with cottonmouth. If you're a snake and you're in the water, you're a cottonmouth. If you're a salamander and you're in the water, you're most likely a cottonmouth. If you're a siren or something that's elongated in the water, you're going to be a cottonmouth. And that's just not true. The only way for you guys to learn the difference is just to learn about the different snakes. So the first snake that I most commonly find around this area is the diamondback water snake. Now diamondback water snakes can be differentiated from cottonmouths by, they're huge. I mean, I've seen five footers quite easily and they have a dark gray to a silver ground color, sometimes a little bit brown depending on the muddy water that they're in. And then they got these little X's or crossbars going across their body. Really heavy bodied snakes and they're not scared to bite you whenever you get a hold of them, but that's the only time they're gonna bite you. They're never gonna bite you for no reason. They're only gonna get you if you go to grab them. They like to imitate the cottonmouth because if you do grab them, they will flatten their head into a triangle and they look menacing. But they are completely harmless, nothing at all to worry about. Second snake that is a water snake around this area is the blotched water snake. Very commonly mistaken for the cottonmouth. They have a yellow belly and as their name implies, little blotches going down their body. And the babies are definitely a lot more exaggerated in the blotching color. The adults kind of lose it as they get older and they too will flatten their head into an epic triangle whenever they feel threatened to imitate this fellow right here. The next one is the broadband water snake and I don't quite understand why he's 
uh, mistaken for a cottonmouth just because he's got these bright orange and yellow colors. And so he's beautiful. He's definitely one of the prettiest water snakes we see. And they'll usually just bolt right when you see them. I haven't seen too many of them imitate the cottonmouth, but they definitely do. Uh, very red, orange chin. Absolutely beautiful water snakes. Um, and like all water snakes, if you try and catch them, most of them will nip you a little bit. The yellow belly water snake is the last one around this area, and they're usually almost all the way black. Some of them do have some little banding on the side or blotching since they integrate with the blotch water snake. And then they'll have a yellow belly, as their name implies. Now, these guys are commonly mistaken for cottonmouths because everyone believes a cottonmouth is black. As you guys can see from this gentleman right here, they're definitely not black. They are definitely a brown color with daggum mosquito. And look at that. I got them. I'm not just the Texas snake hunter. I'm the Texas mosquito hunter as well. Um, so... The, these guys are actually not black. They're brown with dark brown crossbars going across their body, or bands as you would say. And they're heavy, heavy bodied, and they got a skinny, skinny tail. Easy to differentiate them from a yellow belly water snake. The next myth we're going to talk about is, of course, the most famous one, or the one that I hear quite often, nest of cotton mouse. Oh, I saw a big ball of snakes, and it was a nest of cotton mouth. I saw a skier, and he was skiing across the water, and he lost track and flew off into a nest of cotton mouth, got bit a thousand times and died. Well, there's actually just no truth to that at all. There's no record of a man suffering many, many bites from a ball of cotton mouse. Cotton mouse, number one, do not form nests. They give birth to live young. So they actually have these little babies that are absolutely beautiful. They favor copperheads a lot, heavily banded with a yellow tail tip that they use to hunt. They'll sit there and wiggle and writhe it, trying to bring, bring prey in, and that's their way of being able to hunt without having to move at all. So it makes the neonates and the little babies just a lot more successful at hunting. And these guys, once they give birth to their young, their young go. As I said before, cotton mouse actually will eat other snakes. So it's beneficial for a smaller cottonmouth to stay away from a bigger one because he could be on the menu. They are cannibalistic in some cases and they do eat other snakes. So they don't really have any reason to get in a big mass together. The only time you'll see snakes, water snakes in this case, in a big mass together is whenever you see pools like this, when they're starting to close in, like say there's not much rainfall, the fish, the tadpoles, the frogs will be easy to catch. And so all these snakes will come to this area and they'll eat them all. Of course, you don't see very many cotton mouse like this, though. You see mostly water snakes. The only time you'll see or I've seen cotton mouse in a very, very close together area, meaning right on top of each other, is usually during a hurricane or a flood when they're just trying to get someplace safe. Cotton mouse are not going to be in a ball. They do not breed in giant balls. Does not happen, guys. So I, I can't really debunk that one because I couldn't even show you a mating ball or a breeding ball because they don't form them. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. I've seen males fighting each other where they take and intertwine and try and push the chin down, but they don't form a giant ball. It just doesn't happen. So I hope you guys learned a lot about the cottonmouth. I hope you learned how to recognize the difference between him and a water snake. And one of the other things that you can use to identify them and a water snake is watch the way they swim. When a cottonmouth swims, the majority of his back, his entire dorsal side, is sticking out of the water. Very easy to see, even from a long ways away, you can see the cottonmouth just trekking across the water, his entire body would be out. Whereas water snakes, their head is out, maybe a little bit of the back, but the majority of the body will be underwater and they commonly do not hold their head near as high up above the water as a cottonmouth. Very easy to distinguish them while they're swimming. I gotta praise God for the snake. Absolutely love cottonmouths. They're such a joy to be around, fun to work with because they are pretty laid back in my opinion. Please don't try any of this. Don't go stepping on cottonmouths. If you see one, simply take a step back, walk away, and you'll be just fine. Thank you guys very much for watching.